Taking a deeper child's pose, maybe means fingers back by your toes. Or if it just feels better, fingers reaching forward, the extended variety. Let the next few breaths flow in through your nose. And for now, maybe out through the mouth. Or just like that. Dropping in, letting gravity take over. Feeling this rock like quality in your child's pose. And then just slowly inhale, roll it up, coming to kneeling. Walk your knees, your ankles, so everything is about hip bone distance. Arms can extend forward, shrug and release the shoulders back a few times. Melting the traps down, drawing the heart forward and up. Let's take at least two to three. And then we'll change direction, this time or the next. You can reverse one more time, or you can take it one shoulder at a time. Meeting a neutral, tailbone lengthens, sternum lifts. Circle your arms gradually out and up. And then from here, bring your hands toward your heart center, connecting all sides, hands come down. Inhaling, reaching, take it up. Exhaling, reconnecting, hands come down. Do that just one more time, big breath in. And do let it out. And then from here, just walking the right fingertips back several inches. You're gonna lift your hips gradually, float the left arm gradually, looking down, forward or up. And with an exhale, do float everything down. Walk your left fingertips back, maybe five, six, seven inches or so. Inhale everything up and exhale everything down. We're taking both arms forward and up. Fingers are bright, chest is broad. Looping the shoulders, the arms back and down from there. Next, inhale, root your feet, your ankles down to lift the hips, the heart up. And exhale, everything releases back to that kneeling shape. This time, take your left fingertips back first. Big breath in, lift it up. Exhale, everything comes down. Right hand or whichever side you didn't do. Staying in neutral, both arms reaching, skin stretching. Both arms releasing, fingertips rooting. Inhale again, lifting, maybe just a little bit higher. Exhale, releasing from there. And take a breath or two here, maybe sigh it out, flutter your lips out. <clears throat> Walk your hands forward, float your hips up off your heels. Scoot your knees back, maybe hands a little forward and wider than shoulder width. And let's take a few Sufi circles each direction. Big breath in, hips reach back and let it all out. Mm. Breathing completely, coming forward. Letting go completely, take it back. Mm. If you've yet to reverse direction, you can this breath or the next. Filling yourself up and emptying your belly, your lungs out. And then again, let's sit back on the heels, but perhaps an offering 
curling the toes under, stretching the soles of the feet. It can be really intense. There's lots of reasons. Maybe it's too much and you need to come out of it. Or you have to take breaks. Maybe it's just enough. Adding some circles of the wrist, not only because they're good for you, but as a bit of a distraction from anything too intense in the feet. If it's helpful, draw the heart forward, lean the back of the head back. Another breath, two, sighing, shoulder rolling. Uncurl the toes, walking hands forward. Take a breath, two, just creating that tabletop shape that you were just in. But now send the shoulders a little bit further forward, just over the wrist or just shy of the wrist. Step the feet back one by one. Let's find plank. A breath, two, to build it. A little rock and sway. Waking things up where they need to be woken up. Still in your plank, draw the crown of the head forward. Maybe drag the traps back. And then push to a down dog from here. Spring your knees if you need to bring them to the floor for a moment. Rebuild your down dog that way, do. If you're ready for calf stretching, go for it. Pedaling up your heels. Maybe a little extra neck stretching, shaking your head, your neck, like you're saying yes and no. And then do roll yourself into a plank, taking it slow to extend from the heels to the crown. Knees up or down, take another breath or two just to be here. Thighs are lifted, or again, knees are on the floor, but nothing in between. Inhale first, exhale, do push back, down, we're facing dog. This time, walking hands all the way back to meet toes. Slide your hands onto your shin bones. Breathing in, chest out. Emptying the belly, the lungs, and do fold yourself in. Taking that a few times on your own. Inhale, expand. Exhale, contract. Two to three, just like that. At some point, you'll stay in your forward fold. Walking hands somewhere outside. The toes, the feet, your ankles, if you can get there. Not forcing it, but allowing for a deeper fold for the next few breaths. Drop your head once you're in that forward bend, letting it hang. Lift the traps, the shoulder blades away from the earth onto your back toward the sky. Maybe fire up the legs a little bit more, lifting through the quads, straightening knees if and only if that's available. Keep a little micro bend if it's better. Good, and then let's take hands on hips, elbows toward each other. Lift just about halfway and pause. Next breath, we'll inhale and rise to stand. And a big exhale at the top. Do shrug and release it at least once, letting tension roll off your back. And then from there, we're going to take the right arm on top of the left, eagle arms, letting go of any midweek tension in the upper back, the chest, the shoulders. Breathing out the stuff that is not in your control. Reach the elbows forward. Fingers move up. Trap shoulder blades now melting down. And eventually releasing and switching sides. Breathing out the stuff that does feel stagnant. Backs or fronts of palms connect. Fingertips reaching up. Elbow points reaching forward. You might need to remind your face, your shoulders to melt down, creating space around the head, the neck. And after a few breaths, you'll release, let it go. Take that moment to brighten fingers, maybe brighten toes. We're going to interlace fingers at the lower back, sending knuckles down toward the earth. And then taking both of your hands toward your outer upper right hip. I'll turn away to be clear. Let your left ear tip to the left. Loop the right shoulder head a little bit more to the right. 
You can stay put or you can turn your entire head and neck so you're looking down toward your outer left foot. Rewinding through anything you went into. Take it slow, shaking the arms, maybe looping the shoulders. <sighs> when you interlace, the other thumb could find its way on top. No big deal if that's not happening. Taking both hands now to your outer upper left hip. And at first we tip the right ear to the right. We loop the left shoulder head a little bit left. You could stay put for several more breaths. You could also take the gaze, the head, the neck downward, looking toward the outer right foot. Still rolling the chest a bit upward, creating space. Rewinding eventually, easing out of whatever you get into. Now this time, staying with those hands interlaced, reach your knuckles down, your chest up. Feet can always walk closer or further based on what's feeling right for you. Fold yourself down. Gazing one way, the other is an option. Just letting your head hang if that's best. Another bigger exhale, perhaps through the mouth. <sighs> Drop the arm. Heel toe your feet to a hip bone distance set up if they're not there already. And do walk yourself to downward facing dog. Let's bring it forward, finding plank. Knees up or down, yogi's choice. Take another breath in, exhale lower as slow as you can go. Maybe hovering in a chaturanga, modified chaturanga for an extra inhale or two. Thumbs, first fingers are still grounded. Reground them if that got lost. Send your feet back, tailbone lengthen, sternum lifts, low cobra. For today, exhale, just float it all down. Inhale, low or medium cobra. And exhale. Rooting and rising, come on up, inhale. Lingering if it's working for you. Push back, you can take child's pose, puppy dog, or of course, downward facing dog sooner than later. Maybe this is a moment to weave in a little more wrist circling, shoulder shrugging, anything we've done or something from a previous practice, if that's what your body's asking for. Creating space for the chest, the shoulders, for blood to flow, circulation to move efficiently. Take yourself to a plank or a modified plank if that's best, especially in the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists. Passing through Chitturanga, lowering halfway or all the way. Inhaling for Cobra or Urva Mukha, up dog. Exhaling, push back, downward facing dog. Maybe taking that one more time on your own or backing off for a few breaths. Resting when you need to rest. Sighing, including something like a lion's roar. You can join me in lion's pose. Knees wide, big toes can touch. Lick your lips, swallow, scrunch the face. Stick out your tongue, maybe look up. And again, big breath in. Walk the hands forward. Climbing it back, downward facing dog. Mm. Inhaling high on the balls of the feet. End of the exhale, we step or we jump, top of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, take it to stand, maybe gaze up. And exhale, hands come toward the heart center. Palms pressing, or at least finger pads pressing, creating space 
across the pectoral muscles, more commonly referenced as the chest, and yoga, the heart center. Keeping that prayer-inspired shape, shrug, release one more time. Feel that tall, neutral spine you're creating. Helping stuff to flow. Prana, life force. Blood, oxygen, what's often referenced as energy, chi, depending on who you're talking to. Stacking the feet, the ankles, the knees, the hips. Having that move into the belly, the heart, the neck, and even the top of your head. Once you put in that effort, that stira, do you find some ease, some sukha? That's where we be a horse breath or another lion's roar, just a big funky sound, sigh comes in. And once you've aligned physically, setting your sankopa, your intention. Breathing in, breathing out, option to take the thumbs to the mind's eye. Pressing gently, maybe inspiring clarity of thought. Using this as a way to come back to your intention on and off the mat. And also a little body work, a little massage to a very tender area at times. Release the arms, taking it to Vrachasana tree, stand on your right foot, pick up the left knee. A few breaths to hike that foot up, pressing the foot to the inner upper thigh or go low at the calf. Maybe even as low as heel of the left foot to the inner right ankle when you need support. Palms can come back to that prayer inspired shape at the heart, the mind's eye, or of course toward the sky. You can also do one of my faves, Gyan Mudra, thumbs, first finger sealed, the other six extended. Playing with variations like Releve, like your inner ballerina is coming out. But detaching from that competitive spirit, from the need to get it just perfect. Can you breathe through whatever happens in your tree? That includes your transition. Top knee can come forward. The heel could move forward, trying not to lean back. And then do release. Maybe really release. Some shakes, shimmies, shoulder rolls, etc. Side two. Standing on the left foot, keeping it in that strong neutral stance, mountain pose, good posture from the ground up. Passing through that bent knee flamingo as high as foot to the inner upper thigh or not. Where do you need to place the foot on this side? Maybe it is different. Tailbone lengthens, sternum lifts. Talked about Gyan Mudra, not demoing it. On this side in particular, I have a bit more fragility in the knee. Bending, re-extending might help you. Not only for the knee joint, but the areas above and below it in that standing leg. And it will, of course, then affect what's happening in the lifted leg, the pelvis. Noting our top knee is not in a full external rotation, but maybe it moves a little bit deeper over time. And now that I've said all that, we're moving out of it, right? Passing through a flamingo, any sort of variations on it. It's a choice, breathing in, breathing out, before coming on down. And then of course, kicking it out, shaking it out. Could have a Sanskrit name or not, but doing that for a few more breaths. <sighs> Clearing what comes up. Do you get a little too competitive with yourself? Can you instead choose to come back to your intention? When in doubt, something that is simple, that is attainable, something that allows you to be very present with your breath, that really helps your overall well being. So if that makes you kind of shift it or change it, do. Let's take both arms up. Another plant inspired shape cactus, bendy elbows, bright fingers, skin stretching. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, chest forward. Stepping for most of us, if you want to jump, do jump. On this exhale or the next one, take it halfway or still all of the way down. Rock the heart forward, shoulders loop back, cobra or up dog. 
Eventually take it over the toes using the knees or not, down dog. Just a breath or two, realign. Building a little bit of heat high on the balls of your feet. Looking toward hands, exhale, step or float. Inhale, do lengthen out. Exhale, melting in. Take an inhale to come up. With the exhale, hands do come down. One more like that, inhaling, arms up. Exhaling, cactus shape it out. Inhaling, arms up. Diving forward, take it down. Inhaling, chest forward. Letting the other foot lead you or both legs help jump you. Maybe opting out of Chaturanga if that's a better choice. On this inhale or the next, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhaling, take it back. Down dog, puppy dog, a brief child pose. Not a long stay, but do make it count, right? What do you need? Gazing with your eyes more than the whole head or neck. Step, hop, yogi's choice. Inhale, chest forward. Exhale, we fold. Bring it up on the inhale. Hands come down with the exhale. Big step out wide. Grabbing blocks as are helpful and needed, especially for Skandasana. Starting over with Padottanasana. So that's the wide legged forward bend. Arms are reaching out and up. Skin is brightening, prana flowing, maybe reach a little more through one side, the other first. And then dive second, taking your time to come down. Walking hands back so that the heels of the hands are somewhere in line with the heels of the feet. Shake the head, the neck, yes and no. And then we will move sooner than later, but first making sure we're not heavy in the heels. We are using the big toe joints, the little toe joints. Bringing hands forward, blocks could always move with you, lengthen out. Both hands to the outer right foot, hip shift a little bit left. Springy left knee melting a little further, find that subtle twist. Do let the head hang, maybe shake it, yes, no. And again, if heels got heavy, can you rock a little forward, find that happy medium. Easing out of it, you can come through neutral, even taking hands all the way back for a breath or two. And then over to the right or whichever way you didn't go. Hips do rock a little left and you twist, you melt a little further right. Finishing up side two, you'll start to bring it all back to center. And again, walk both hands back, send the toes forward, maybe lift them, lower them from there. Hands could always be on the outer ankles, the feet instead. Legs get a little straighter, last breath. Then bring your hands forward, allow both feet, ankles, knees, and hips to turn out a little bit. Kind of like the lifted leg in your tree. Bending into your right knee, start to sit low for Skandasana, your side lunge. Let your left heel extend to the left, toes reach up, hips rock back and down. And you spend a few breaths here. You can always have your hands on the blocks or even forearms on the blocks, Ooh. making things in many ways deeper, but doable. And now after a few breaths coming up and over side two, easing in, it might be a pleasant surprise or not. And blocks under hands, forearms, or just using the earth, maybe the fingertips. Couple more big breaths, letting that release happen. 
And then you'll move between right and left several times on your own. The extended legged foot could always stay grounded or you can flex it. Getting more of that lengthening, that stretch when you do. A bit more strengthening and sometimes stability when you ground through the outer edge. Hands could also be at the heart, by the ears, definitely making things harder, which I'm not currently demoing, so your choice. Finishing up, maybe one, two more breaths on your own. Hanging again where you need to hang. Re-paralleling feet. Taking your hands to your hips like you did early on, elbows toward each other. Rooting and rising to come up. And take a big exhale at the top. And turn your heels in, your feet, ankles, knees and hips out. Slide your forearms down to your inner thighs, rock and sway. Skandasana warms you up for goddess pose, but going a little bit deeper with the breath. Again, grounding through the heels, letting them be a little heavier than the toes themselves through this work for the next couple minutes. Stand it up, consider reaching up, folding your eight fingers, had to count for a moment, in, thumbs wrapping around those eight fingers. And then you're gonna bend both elbows, come on down, hips back, chest a little forward, letting out a big exhale, maybe a big ha, any sort of release that helps you get stuff up and out. So as you're ready for it, keep going. Thighs toward parallel, but as low as your knees can go. Not creating harm, but strength. Last three, two. This time sit low and see if you can stay. You can always come back up and back down. Right heel maybe lifts for a breath. Big maybe, switching it, left heel could lift for a breath. Big maybe, both heels for a breath or two, starting to stand up. Using your heels if that's what your knees need. Feet come down, arms come down. You'll walk, jump, whatever works, feet back toward each other. Move your blocks so they're not in your way, but in reach as needed. And let's take it back to mountain pose. Just for a moment, observing, hands could return to the heart. They could also come to your own body, one at your belly, one at your chest for the next few breaths. Letting your mouth close, allowing your face to stay relaxed. Widening the area between the eyebrows if it got a little tense and scrunched. And seeing that intention you set early on, letting it get clearer, breathing it into your being, breathing out the stuff sitting around it, the things not in your control. 